So I mentioned in the main video that the Lego sorter is powered by artificial intelligence. But you'd be right to ask, well, what does that actually mean? So first of all, artificial intelligence is a really broad field. And we'll be looking at a subset of this field called machine learning. Actually, we can get even more specific by looking at supervised learning with neural networks. So what is a neural network? Well, one way to look at it is as a virtual brain, which performs a specific task by taking inputs and turning them into outputs. In order to get the brain to perform the tasks we want, we have to feed it lots of data. And in supervised learning, this data is used to build up connections in the brain that allow it to perform the tasks we want. Generally, the more data you feed into the neural network, the better it is at the task. So let's have a look at the Lego sorting AI. The network design is called a convolutional neural network, which is a type of neural network that's specialized to work with images. The input to the network is an image of a Lego part, and the output is the part number for that specific part. So our task is to take an input image and generate a prediction or classification to tell us what part it is. So in order for the brain to make these predictions, we need to build up the right connections in the neural network. And that means we need data, specifically labeled data. For each input image, we need to tell the neural network what part number it is. Then you can use the images and the labels together to build up the connections in the brain that we need. So typically, in an application like this, you'd collect a bunch of images and manually label them all. But in our case, this causes a problem. There are just so many different types of parts in so many different colors and possible orientations. With a small number of manually labeled images, we just can't build up enough of the connections we need in our virtual brain. For the network to be able to recognize parts reliably, the number of images we will need is huge, so manually labeling enough images would just take far too much time. And this is a really big problem in heaps of AI projects. So one really promising solution that I've found is to use synthetic data. And that means, instead of taking images from the real world and labeling them manually, we can artificially generate our own images with labels attached. Using 3D models of Lego bricks, we can create realistic photographs automatically without any human input. Then, we can train the neural network on these new images to create the connections that we need. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. If we try to get the neural network to classify a real image, it'll give the wrong result most of the time. We're running into something called the simulation to reality gap, or the sim to real problem. And here's the problem. The real images all look similar to each other due to the physics and lighting conditions in the real world. The fake images try to match the real ones as closely as possible. But there are subtle differences in things like lighting, shadows, color, and texture. To you or me, both of these types of images look almost the same. But to the brain we're trying to build, they might as well be from different galaxies. And these subtle differences are enough to throw everything off. Right now, the sim to real problem is considered pretty much unsolved by researchers. But luckily, in 2017, a paper was published which gives us a really helpful technique. It's called domain randomization. The gist of it is, let's stop trying to make our synthetic images match the real images perfectly. Instead, let's expand the boundaries of the type of image that we're able to generate. These randomized images vary hugely in material, color, and lighting. Now, we can take these much more variable images and feed them into the neural network to build up much better quality connections in the brain. And finally, it's able to perform pretty well on real images. But researchers have also figured out that we can improve our results even further. We can take a small number of real images and do a bit more learning, building the connections further. This is called fine-tuning, and it means we get much more accurate predictions, even if we only use a small number of images in this step. And that's it! We have a working neural network that can accurately classify almost 3,000 different types of Lego bricks. Thanks for watching.